Everybody say breakthrough. breakthrough. Notice I'm not saying breakthrough. It's not breakthrough. It's breakthrough. Breakthrough. Oh, there it is. <laughs> ah. For those of you who are taking notes, I'm going to be referring to the particular passage of Scripture in 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. And we're going to go from verse, start in verse 21. This, in this uh, particular um, portion of scripture, we're going to be looking at Elijah, the prophet Elijah, and um, the situation that happened with him. And just to give you a bit of, bit of background to this, uh, before we get to verse 21, Elijah has called the people of Israel to make a decision. And uh, he wants them to make a decision for God, as it were, as opposed to a decision for the false God that many of them were serving in the nation. And uh, so we get to verse 21. And Elijah, it says, came near to all the people and said, how long will you halt and limp between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, B-A-A-L, that was the name of the false god that they were worshipping. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him. Everybody say, the people did not answer him. <laughs> you know, it's absolutely amazing how God gives us a choice. He does not force us to worship him. He does not force any of us. He does not for force anybody on the planet to worship him. God gave us a choice. He's given every man, woman, a child a choice. Isn't that amazing? I mean, he's God, right? So God, God Almighty, he could have us like puppets on a string because he's God. And he could make us do what he wants us to do. But he doesn't. He gives everybody fair choice. He's so secure in that. You know, people who are domineering and trying controlling, you know, the root cause is that they're not secure in themselves. Imagine that. But God is so secure in himself. He's God, whether we worship him or not, that he gives us a choice. And so Elijah says to the people of Israel, he says, how long is, how long, you know, how long will you halt and limp between two opinions? You know, if God is God, then worship him. But if Baal, if you're saying that Baal is God, well then, well then follow him. Because you've got the temple, we've got the temple, and at that time in, in, the, in, the, in the nation of Israel, you know, they had, they had the temple and they had the sacrifices that were going on and, and people could go and, and offer sacrifices and worship God in the, in the temple that he ordained, but also in many other places, in high places and low places, they had built shrines to other gods, to the gods of the Philistines and the gods of the, of the people that they were supposed to drive out. They had gods there that they built and so they would go and worship at the temple and then they would go and so he says how long will you halt and limp between two opinions verse 22 then Elijah said to the people he said I I only remain prophets of the Lord but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Anybody ever, ever, ever feel outnumbered? Have you ever 
ever felt outnumbered? Have you ever felt outnumbered? Like this, everything is against you. It's just you and there's all this that's happening. Has anybody ever felt outnumbered? All this stuff going on, all this stuff happening. Oh, and it's just me. So in verse 23, he says, let two bulls be given us. Let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. Everybody say, put no fire to it. And then he says, I will dress the other bull, lay it on the wood and put no fire to it. Verse 24, then you call on the name of your God, small g, and I will call on the name of the Lord and the one who answers by fire. Everybody says by fire. fire. Let him be God. And all the people answered and they said, oh, it's well spoken. They said, oh, yes, yes, that's a good idea, Elijah. Yes, let's do that. Yes. And verse 25, Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, he says, choose one bull for yourselves and dress it first, for you are many. You know, that reminds me so much of, who was it? Was it Abraham? Remember when there was contention between Abraham's servants and Lot's servants. And Abraham, who was the greater, he was, he was the, you know, the patriarch of the family. He, he was the one, after all, who invited Lot to come along with him. You know, and Lot was able to tag along. And Abraham said when there was difficulty between them, he said, you know what? You choose first. Choose first and then whatever's left, I'll take that. So Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourselves and dress it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your God, small g, everybody say small g, small. but put no fire under it. Verse 26, so they took the bull given them, dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O Baal, hear and answer us. But there was no voice, no one answered, and they leaped upon or limped about the altar as the altar they had made. I'm going to read that again. O oh, Baal, they said, hear and answer us. Now it's exclamation par mark, so that means they, they were shouting. O oh, Baal, hear and answer us, but there was no voice, no one answered, and they leaped upon or limped about the altar they had made. O oh, Baal, hear and answer us, but there was no voice, no answer. Mm. Have you ever had a situation where you're going through something and you're praying fervently, you're praying about it. This thing is surrounding you, it's, you're going through it and you're praying to God about it. But let me tell you what, what, what we tend to do. We're praying earnestly to God about it and we're praying to God, but our eyes are fixed on the thing. So we're praying to God about the trouble, about the hardship, about the challenge, about the difficulty, about what's bothering us. We're praying to God about it and we're praying to God, but our minds are on the problem. And I hope I, yeah. So we're praying to God, but what is uppermost in our heart in, in, and in our mind is not the God we're praying to, but in our heart and our mind is the problem. 
Okay, let me give you an example. It's the, it's the 25th day of the, of the month and rent is due on the 1st. And you're praying about the rent because you don't have the rent. The person's paying for the rent, praying for the rent, but they don't have the rent. They come to God, oh God, I need $5,000 in five days. Well, in four days, really, because I've got to, oh God, I need $5,000. Oh God, I need, oh God, can you help me? I need $5,000. Oh God, I need $5,000. And your mind is on the, oh, help me. Your mind is on what you're seeing in your mind you're praying you might even be on your knees but what you're seeing in your mind and what you're seeing in the eyes of your heart is the problem but you're talking to God but you might anybody understand what I'm saying the thing is so big that it's looming big ahead of you and even in your prayer time you're praying to God but all you can see is how big the problem is and they said oh Baal hear and answer us but there was no answer you know I'm going to give you an example I have in front here a grey patch and my hair is greying more and more and I have this grey patch in front here and not only is it grey, it's short and broken. Why? Because for so many months, it's more than a year now, I haven't been relaxing my hair. And so it's frizzy, especially in the humidity. It gets frizzy. And because it gets frizzy, I kept putting the flat iron on it. So how many know you keep putting the flat, the heat on the hair, it's going to break, right? So not only is it grey, but it's frizzy and it's short. So I'm talking, it happens all the time. I'm talking to somebody and they're talking, we're having a conversation and we're having a conversation and I can see it. Don't tell me it happened a million times. And I can see it. They're looking up, my, they're looking up. <laughs> to me and they're answering me and I'm talking to them and they're listening but they're not looking at me they keep looking up because they're trying to figure out what's going on with her hair and it's the same thing we do with God you see there's a distraction so we're talking to God but we're not looking at God we're not looking at his word. We're not looking at his goodness. We're not looking at his faithfulness. We're not looking at how he brought us through. We're not looking at the amazing largeness of our God. We're talking to God, but we're looking at the problem. God, I need you to get me out of this thing. And this thing is what my eyes, I need my rent paid. I need this paid. I have the car payment. I have fees due. I've got... <laughs> Everybody's saying there was no answer. So verse 27 says, At noon Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud. It means, it means shout louder, you know. Cry aloud. For he is a god, small g. Everybody say small g. Either he is musing or he has gone aside or he is on a journey or, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. Verse 28, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. They cried louder and they cut themselves. They cut themselves. Somebody say they cut themselves. <laughs> after their custom. It was a custom. They were accustomed. After their custom. With knives and lances. Until the blood gushed out upon them. In Philippians 4. And verse 6 says. Do not fret. Or have any anxiety about anything. In fact let's read that together. You ready? After three. One, 
two, three. Do not fret or have anxi any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Let's stop right there. The word says, do not fret. Do not fret. When you look up that word fret, do you know it means devour? To fret means to devour. That word fret means devour. It means to gnaw at. G-N-A-W, gnaw. Gnaw at. To gnaw at something is to constantly be... You're destroying it, but bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. Do not fret, do not gnaw at, do not devour. When we fret, we are devouring ourselves. Fretting, fret, 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 fret. When we fret, we devour who? Ourselves. We're a gnawing, gnawing, G-N-A-W, gnawing away at yourself. You're cutting yourself. Do not fret or have anxiety about small things, but the big things, go ahead, fret, be anxious. Yeah? What does the word say? It says, do not fret or have anxiety about My God, you know what? If everybody in this place got that, could you imagine it? Not fretting or having anxiety about anything. Look at your neighbor and say anything. Oh, no, you didn't look at your neighbor. I, I, I know it. Somebody just looked at me and said anything. Look at your neighbor and say anything. But in every circumstance, every circumstance, Oh, this is for somebody here. In every, every circumstance, every circumstance, that means every circumstance, in every circumstance and in everything, what? By prayer and petition, which is a definite request. You know, a petition is something, it's not, a, it's not when you're asking for something and it's a very casual kind of, yeah, can you give me that? Uh, can you give me that bottle of water? You know, that kind of thing. No, that's not a definite a petition. A petition is made in a, it's, it's, it's more formal. When you make a petition of somebody, you, you approach um, with, in a particular um, attitude and as well what you do, and usually when you make a petition of somebody, it's usually somebody in a higher state than you are. And so when you go to somebody to make a petition, you approach with um, humility, you approach with thanksgiving and gratitude, Attitude, and you approach when you're making that petition you also give reasons why you don't just say give me a petition is is more like a formal request and I'm not intimating at all that we have to be formal with God I mean after all he is king of kings and lord of lords and he is the lord God almighty and all heaven even now is bowing before him crying holy 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 is the lord God almighty who was and who is and who is to come and the 24 elders the heavenly Sanhedrin cast down their crowns even as we speak I don't know they cast it down and they pick it up and they cast it down and they pick it up because they cast their crowns before him and it says the, the the angels the four beings around him stop don't stop night they cease not night and day but to cry holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come it says they rest not night and day 
and it's going on now, it's happening now, we're here now, it's going on there now, it blows my mind when I open up my mind to the reality of that is happening now, can you hear it? So if even I were to intimate that we need to be formal at times with God, the thing is we don't have to. Why? Because of Jesus. Because he is our father. But when we're making a definite request, it's good to make a definite request, a petition. Robin was laughing. He was sharing with me this week. He Last week he wrote on his notebook <laughs> a particular, by, he was prophesying to us. He wrote down a particular thing, get such and such signed this week, before it happened. And the thing happened where we had to sign the whatever. But there was something that needed to go along with the signing that didn't happen till after. So he was saying, oh man, I should have wrote the whole thing out. Anyway, yeah, so be, you know, let's be detailed. I will tell you, we will tell you about that very soon. Ah, so do not fret. We're still talking about them cutting themselves, as was their custom. Is it, been, is it anybody's custom here to fret? Everybody's got their hands down. Fantastic. I love it. Anybody's custom here to be anxious? I'm not looking. I'm not looking to be anxious and worried and fretful about anything? Is it anybody's custom? Not looking, I'm not looking. Yeah, we're gonna get past this, we're gonna get there, okay. So let's read Philippians 4, 6, and 7 together. Do not fret. Let's read it together. One, two, three. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, definite requests with thanksgiving. Oh, mm. Continue to make your wants known to God. Let's go to verse 7 from the New King James Version. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That sounds like a promise to me. That sounds like a promise to me. And the peace, if we do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in everything and every circumstance, we make by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. It says, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will, everybody say will. It will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go back. Let's, let's, let's meet um, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Let's go back. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. So we read verse 28. It says, And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out upon them. Verse 29. Midday passed, it says, And they played the part of prophets until the time for offering, the evening sacrifice. But there was no voice, no answer, no one who paid attention. Verse 30. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him, and he repaired the old altar of the Lord that had been broken down by Jezebel. Okay, hear what? Hear this. I, I, want, I, want us all, I want us all, including myself, to be very clear that this, what we're sharing today, and what we share all the time in this house, it is not entertainment. It's not something that we do, we get a word or, you know, try and, oh, what are we going to talk about this week? What are we talking about? Whether any of us, mom or dad, Robin, myself, and whoever we invite uh, to speak, it's never... We never come here and say, oh, well, what can, what, what can take up about 40 minutes? Let's find if we can, let's see if we could take some, something here. Because the people have come to church and, you know, we've got 40 minutes to kill and, and we've got to, no, 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 no. It's
it's never that. It is food for us. It is modus operandi. It's, it's direction. It's how we're supposed to live this life. Oh, boy. So God has given us a choice. How long will we halt and limp between two opinions? If God is God, I don't care what we're going through, but if God is God and if his word is true, then that's what I'm standing on, don't matter what it looks like, what it smells like, what it feels like, what people say to me, what the news says. If God is God, then God is God. But if I, if, 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 I, if I make the choice, well, everything else is God. The job is God. Uh, what the news says is God. What people say is God. What the, what the neighbors say, you know, when they're talking, hey, 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 what's going to happen, what's going to happen, all that. If that's God, we'll follow them. Yes. When we're feeling outnumbered, know that you're not outnumbered. When we're facing challenges and difficulties, when you go to God, look at him, not at the problem. Put the problem aside, put it away. Look at him, he is the solution. The other instruction is do not fret because when you fret, you cut yourself. You cut yourself. You're fretting. You're cutting yourself. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. And all the people came near him and he repaired, what do you say repaired? He repaired the old altar of the Lord that had been broken down by Jezebel. Oh, oh Jezebel. I'm not going to talk about Jezebel, but it, for those who don't know, Jezebel was the queen, okay? Jezebel was the queen. She was the wife of Ahab, who was the king of Israel. And Jezebel was the queen. And she was the one that instigated and uh, had those prophets of Baal. And she, she encouraged and, and, and uh, um, uh, compelled the people to worship Baal instead of the one true God. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But he, Elijah, repaired the old altar of the Lord that had been broken down. Pastor Robin spoke about altars. He spoke about, he spoke about giving thanks. He spoke about remembering what God has done, how he's brought, brought you through in the past. That's an altar. An altar is a place of remembrance. It's like, I remember, I remember. You know, most of the time we put the altars down. God brings us through something and we may forget, forget the time, forget the date, forget whatever. And even forget what he did and then walk on through life and forget. But we have to build an altar. Every time we recognize God has done something for us, build an altar. How do we build an altar? We bring it to remembrance. We keep it before our face. You know, when the children of Israel were crossing the Jordan and Joshua was leading them, Moses had died and Joshua was leading them and they had to cross the Jordan when it was the worst time to cross the Jordan. It was the time when the flood, when, when the Jordan flooded. But God said, go ahead and cross. And he gave them some instructions and he caused them to, to the priests to take the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of the Lord, and step into the water with the Ark and the, 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 the river would part so that they could cross. And that's exactly what happened. But Joshua told the people, he said, as you cross, when you get onto the other side, he says, get, build an altar. He said, get 12 stones that have not been handled, not been hewed out, not a human instrument has not touched them and build an altar so that you remember what God 
has done for you. And so in generations to come, when the children pass this way and they say, what is that? You can say that represents, that reminds us. Oh boy. Everybody say, build an altar. What has God done for you? I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to build an altar. Build an altar. Build an altar. Build an altar of praise. Build an altar of thanksgiving. I know what you're facing is difficult right now. And maybe it's things that you haven't faced before. Or maybe in greater intensity than you think you've faced before. But what you do with that is you remember how he brought you out last week, last year, five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago. What he did when you were oh my god when you had the Red Sea before you and Pharaoh's army behind and mountains on both sides and you didn't know how you were going to get out of this one remember build and altar. Every one of us, every one of us, every one of us can look back and see how God has brought us through. When you didn't know how there was a way out. When you thought for sure failure is going to be my experience. When you thought for sure that the bill collectors were going to come and get you. When you thought for sure you couldn't pass the exam. When you thought for sure. Come on, is there? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Are we in the river? I, I don't know, are we? Because he's so quiet in here. I don't know. Is there anybody who wants to build an altar? I encourage you to stand to your feet right now. Stand right now. Oh, oh, I don't know. 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 Stand up right now. It's this. Where are you? Open your mouth. Build an altar. Build an altar. This is your time to build an altar. If you got to say, if all you can say is, thank you, God. I know you brought me through that thing. You know what that thing is. Build an altar. Give him thanks. You know David. David, when he, oh my God, because we're going to end here now. We're going to end here right now because there's more, but I'm not, I'm, 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 I've got to stop now. But King David, before he was king, or oh, can you can, hold on to your altar making just for like 30 seconds because this is going to help you. This is going to help you. When David, David was, was a young fella and there was this, And the Philistines had encamped in array against the Israelite army. And the king of Israel was there, Saul. And the Israelites were camped in array. And the Philistines were camped in array. But what happened, the Philistines sent out this mighty warrior. He was bigger than everybody else. He was badder than anybody else. He was worser than anybody else. Yeah, worser than anybody else. And he came and he shouted insults. Anybody in here, your situation shouting insults to you? Here comes little David. Little David says to Saul, he says, first of all, Saul says, no, you can't. You can't. um," He says, you can't go out against him. You're a little lad and you're inexperienced in battle and you're not even in the army and you can't go and you can't go. David said, no, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. I've built a couple of altars. I've built a couple of altars. You see, when I was looking after my father's sheep, yeah, I know, I know I'm not all 
that. I know I'm not a general. I know I'm not even a captain. In fact, I, I, I'm not even. I'm not even a what? What do you call that? A, 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 a private. I'm not even a private. But you see, when I was looking after my father's sheep, when I was looking after my father's business, when I was looking after my father's business, my father's sheep, and and a, a lion came. And a lion came and took one of the sheep. But here's what I did. I ran after that lion. And I took him by his beard. And I made him take his mouth off that sheep. And I killed that lion. And then sometime after what happened, I was looking again after my father's sheep. And a bear came. And he took one of the sheep. Oh, and I ran after that bear. And I fought that bear. And I made it open its mouth and let go of that sheep. And I killed that bear. Oh, and the same God who caused me to kill the lion and to kill the bear, even though I'm only a lad, he will cause me to bring down that giant. Oh no, you see, if that's for me, that's all right. But if that's for Jesus, I think we can, I think we can do better. I think we can do better. So you see how important it is to build an altar. Because when you build an altar, you remember you say, mm, let me check my altars, let me check my altars. He was Jehovah Jireh when I needed help. He was the Lord, my banner when the armies were against me. He was the Lord, my healer when they gave me. I feel a preach coming on. I feel a preach. Woo! So can we take one minute? 60 seconds before we end and each person here take your time and build an altar tell him how thankful you are remember what he did to you we did for you in the past tell him tell him not just a general oh thank you lord thank you lord oh thank you lord i thank you that you caused me to be in the right place at the right time this monday and you called Oh God, I thank you for the time that I was diagnosed with you know what, you know what, and you healed me. Oh God, I thank you. You're too quiet, you're too quiet. This is not ch that church. This is in the river. You're in the flow. Sometimes you've got to press through. It's not going to feel comfortable, and I'm not working you up. I'm telling you, go and press, 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 press. God, you're great. God, you're great. God, you're great. God, you're great. Thank you. Thank you. God, you're great.